Hi everyone, here we are back in my workshop. My name's Colin Way. Um, today it's all about sharpening. So we're going to look at how we set the slow speed grinder up, or the Axminster uh, 200 trade slow speed grinder, onto what is called the BGK400. And I'll explain all about all these, these names and letters and all those sorts of things as we go through. We've got veteran of the uh, lives on the camera today. We've got Charlie. I was expecting it to be Vicky, but they've had a swap around. Vicky's busy. Charlie's... Uh, Charlie's on the camera. He knows what he's doing. He's going to ask the questions. And I'm expecting today there to be a lot of questions. One thing I will say before we start is um, we know the camera situation at the moment, um, internet speeds, all those sorts of things, uh, bandwidth. Um, if it's a bit blurry today, don't fret, don't worry. I'm going to repeat this demonstration in the new year when we'll have several different camera angles and a much better picture because I understand with this, there's lots of figures, diagrams and things like that I'd like to show you as well. And um, sharpening is an essential part of what we do. Um, if we don't sharpen our tools, we're not gonna be able to turn very well. So we're gonna look at, uh, look at that again um, and repeat lots of things. And again, in the new year, we're gonna repeat loads of the demos that we've already done. Some of the favorite ones, we're gonna get back out and, and play around with those. So uh, don't fret. Don't forget to keep your suggestions coming though. We've had um, a good dozen now suggestions. So that's gonna carry us well through to January, February, hopefully into March as well. And, uh, um, and so that'll keep us going. So, what we're going to do, so we've had our new stocks of the trade Axminster to the 200 SRG slower and a grinder coming in. And if you remember, we've been asked if we could do this um, uh, demonstration all the way back in August. And I've just literally been waiting for these guys to come back in the stock and they are. So here you go. So this was a new one out of the box yesterday. I've done some preparation because there's an awful lot of drilling and things like that to do. Um, basically we've mounted it to a baseboard. Now just for convenience and so you can see what's happening, I've put this on the bed of the lathe. Now it's clamped down, so it's not going to go anywhere, so don't worry. I've also trued up the wheels, which is an essential part um, of um, a pre-flight check, I would have would have said. Uh, before you start grinding, you need to true up the wheels. When you replace a wheel, same thing. Now that only applies to um, composite wheels. So when I'm talking about aluminium oxide, carborundum, those sorts of things, they'll need to be trued up because they're molded. They're made in, as a paste form um, and molded into this solid that we see. Um, so whenever you change a wheel and whenever you get a new grinder, that's uh, an essential part of what we do. And I'll show you the tools to do that as well in a moment. Obviously, or well, may not be obvious, but with a CBN wheel or a diamond wheel, that doesn't need to be done. You cannot true those wheels, they are steel. Um, just with a diamond um, or CBN face. Okay, so it's only these these types with the stone wheels that, that I call stone wheels. Um, to set the um, kit up, we're going to walk through that, and then once we've done that, we're also going to sharpen the tools. So please, you know, like I say, questions. Just to preempt some though, the tools that I'm going to sharpen, we've got a roughing gouge. I'm just glancing over. Yeah, yeah, have a look, Charlie. Um, so I've got. Let's start here with a bowl gouge. Um, I've got a roughing gouge, a beading and parting tool. We had questions about my skews, the signature skew, so we're going to look at one of those. A bigger bowl gouge, a standard skew, a parting tool, and a spindle gouge. Um, those are the ones we're going to look at. Just before we get started, well, I was just talking about truing the wheels up. So on this side, this is the, the wheels that the, um, the machine comes with. So it's the 82... 100 SRG slow running grinder, Axminster Tools 200 mil slow running grinder. Okay, grey wheel is carborundum, the white wheel is aluminium oxide. The aluminium oxide is the finer side, that's the side that we're going to sharpen with. The grey side is going to be for my scrapers, um, for reshaping, all that sort of stuff. Okay, and white wheel aluminium oxide just keeps the steel a little bit cooler, and then of course, if you go to CBN, cooler again. I'm not going to fit a CBM wheel for you. They're not in stock at the moment. Not Well, they are, but not the 180 grits for sharpening. I want the 180 grit. Um, I have a 180 grit on my old grinder back here. Okay, so um, uh, when they do come in, then we'll look at fitting one of those as well. Okay, so a slow running grinder just means it's running around about, it's about 13 to 1400 revs. So it's quite a lot slower than a conventional running um, grinder, which... You can average out to be about three to 4,000 revs most of the time. And um, you get industrial grinders, they're going to be going a lot, lot faster than that. Okay, so this one's nice and nice and calm, as it were. That slow-running grinder really gives you a sense of calmness when, you sh when you're sharpening. Saying that, 
Aluminium oxide wheels, carborundum wheels will always generate sparks. So just be a little bit careful where you're sharpening. Always make sure you've got your face protected. Always make sure you've got all the guards fit. It's not a health and safety um, lecture, but I'm really feel quite strongly about um, grinders. Um, guards have to be fitted. They must be fitted because if worst case scenario happens and a wheel does explode, then that's the only thing between you and a flying bit of rock. Okay, so you must be really sure that your guards are fitted. And just a little bit of information on the anatomy of, of our bench grinder before we set everything up. We've got your tool rests. They are that, they are a tool rest. They're not out of the box, they're not an angle guide at all. So just be aware of that. You will have to um, jig up um, your tools. This is your spark guard. So spark guard, that gives it, sort of, gives it away really. It's for protecting your eyes from sparks, not debris, sparks. Um, this is what we call a spark arrester. So again, if there's small particles that are coming around the wheel, say you've got clumped up um, ground material, it just stops the, the excess from bouncing down there and, and again, springing back up at you. Ideally, you want to have the spark arrester um, around about a sort of millimetre to 1.5 away from that wheel. Okay, so really close. You don't want too big a gap there. Um, and then your spark guard protecting you. Your main line of defence, of course, is always your face protection. Okay, so we're going to have, um, I'm going to have a visor on in a moment before we start sharpening. Always really important. The other thing is, let the wheel do the work. Don't lever your tools onto the grinding wheel. That's not what um, it's supposed to happen. The wheel's going to grind, it's going to sharpen. Let it do it. its work. It's, it's not a power struggle, really. It's just, just let the chisel rest on the wheel. It will do the job for you. Um, you'll only burn out the, the machine, make horrible grooves in your wheel, blacken your tools um, if you press too hard. Okay, and prevention rather than cure. Don't wait until your chisel goes black to keep it cool. Make sure you keep it quenched or even better still, don't let it get that far. Just keep it nice and gentle with your pressure um, and uh, don't uh, sharpen for too long and that'll keep it nice and cool for you. All right, so there's lots of things there to digest and this practice makes perfect. But again, don't lose any sleep. If suddenly your the chisel tip, say you're doing a parting tool, goes a little bit blue, doesn't matter, don't, don't lose any sleep over it. It's just um, harden that chisel tip a little bit more so you'll slowly grind that away. Um, okay, you might have to sharpen a little bit extra, but you know you haven't ruined the chisel. Don't, don't worry too much about it. It's all part of the learning process really. Okay, so let's just have a, a brief look at all the kit that we've got. So first of all, we've got the grinder, I've explained that. Um, this is our um, BGM 100. BGM 100 is the, um, the platform and the bar um, that sets up and gives you the ability to use all the Tormek jigs on your bench grinder. A really huge um, uh, benefit for us. And if we're talking um, wood turning jigs, then I think the Tormek is one of the best ones that's out there, to be honest, it's all I use, whether it's on a grinder um, or whether it's on a water stone, the Tormek itself, it's, it's all I use. Um, now that comes in kit form. So I've mentioned to you earlier about the BGK 400 and now I'm just gonna show the, the camera this box. Okay, B, uh, Lily's got all the details of this as well, so she's gonna put that up there. That's a BGK 400 or a kit, a BGK 400. And all that means, basically, it's the set for wood turners. And that set for wood turners includes this bit here. Come on over, Charlie. I'm gonna go through a few bits here. So this is everything that's in that BGK 400. I brought, again, took this out of the box earlier yesterday. So we've got the BGM 400. I'll show you the, remember all of these. So with the platform and the bar. It's got the a really important bit of kit, the TTS 100, Tormek Tool Setter 100. Now this has got a huge amount of information on it. Um, it's got bowl gouge um, recipes, spindle gouge recipes, skew chisel recipes. It's also got protrusion um, measurements here, little angle checker, and this is the means to check the bar distance from the grinding wheel here, these two holes. Uh, coupled with these two metal discs. We'll go over that in a moment. That comes in its box there. In the box, you're also gonna get um, some labels to mark the tools. And really, really important here, you've got 
crib sheet with the same information that we've got on the TTS 100 itself. So you get all that information in four languages if you weren't content with just the one as well. It, uh, there is English, um, but there's other languages on there, French, German, and Swiss. And then we've got the main instruction manual. And the, the instruction manual for the TTS 100 um, again, it's in several languages there. Um, it's It gives you all those same bits of information. So all the recipes for the jigs. Uh, and it, like I said, we'll go over it because there's, there's, um, each recipe is broken down into sections. Okay, so loads of information in that one. That's the TTS 100. Then you get the SVD186R. Now this is a lovely um, bowl gouge jig. It's got a, a crank knuckle here, um, all of my bowl gouges tend to be on jig setting four. Again, we're gonna go over that for you. But in the box, you get more labels to mark your tools just so you know exactly um, the angles. You get a jig for sharpening carb, uh, not carb by tip, but tip tools. So that's for um, putting into the bowl gouge jig for sharpening your tip tools. You get a pen for the labels, of course. Then we move on to the multi-jig, the multi-jig comes in two parts. So just the plain seat like that, and that's gonna be used for our roughing gouge and parting tools and all those sorts of things. And then the um, addition of this little bit here when taking out the saddle, that uh, will turn that into a skew chisel um, grinding jig. So another essential part for turners. And again, more labels, good instruction manual in there as well, all included. And the other important bit, that comes with BGK 400 is the um, instruction manual. Now I haven't found Tormek uh, any better instruction manuals than the ones that Tormek do. They don't leave anything to guesswork, but this one's important for this setup because it gives you all the relevant information to set the um, jigs up with your bench grinder. So on your own bench uh, baseboard. And it gives you information to setting up a six inch grinder or an eight inch grinder um, or even a 10 inch grinder here um, with the jig. So it gives you all the information that you need. I used this yesterday to set this one up um, and I found it really, really uh, valuable uh, bit of kit. Okay, and then it'll go through all of the other jigs as well. We've got the TTS 100, we'll have the bowl gouge jig, the, the multi jig and so on. I've got a question. Uh, can you please explain how you trude up the wheels and can you use a Tormet grinding kit? Yes, in one answer. Now we're gonna start with grinding up the wheels. Now before we go to the grinding, let me show you the three pieces here. So if we talk the wheels behind me, the um, aluminum oxide and the carborundum, a devil stick, or what they call, used to call a devil stick, now it's just a truin stick. Um, Lily, sorry, I didn't give you this one, but if you could find that one, it's called Devil Stick. And then Diamond Truing Stick, okay? My favorite is this one, because this is once in a lifetime purchase. You'll probably have to replace that every few years, because that will wear, okay? And then just, I wanted just to show you this block. This is for cleaning CBM wheels, okay? It's a different stick, don't you? Don't confuse all of these together. That's for CBN, that's for aluminum oxide and, um, and carborundum, okay? So that's those. Okay, let's go to the grinder then, Charlie. I'm just gonna grab a visor. Um, so I'm gonna just true up, I've trued these already, um, but now I've taken off my tool rest from that side. So I'm gonna true this side up again for you, just to show you. Um, I, you need the tool rest there, you don't wanna be um, just sharpening on the bar. Um, it's not safe to do that. So you'll need the, a secure tool rest. You just clean my Wiser a little bit. Of course, when I'm sharpening at home here, I've got my the JSP, the, the my full face visor with fresh air blowing through it. I don't need to talk to anybody, so this one's quite useful. It just doesn't get used often because I've got my larger unit. But what we're going to do, so. When you're doing this, it's, it's, it'll be worth having your dust extraction running because this is going to send um, particles of um, abrasive dust in the air. Um, uh, so, you know, you need to make sure that you're not breathing that in. I'm just very gently going to touch on, so I'm not going to create too much dust in this instance. So let me just take my watch off so I don't damage that. And we're going to just, just dabble with these two. Okay, before we go any further. So it's this side we need to see, Charlie, is that okay? All right, so let's start the 
the grinder. I just tend to, out of, I don't know, self-preservation, I think it is, sand one side when I'm starting the grinder. That's all. Yeah, we're all good. Um, I like to sand on one side. Charlie's doing exactly the same. He's well out of the way. Um, he's not standing in line at all. So we're going to start the grinder up, visor down. Okay, so we need to keep flat on the tool rest here. I'm going to start with a diamond and just gently touch. Start with a diamond and just gently touch. And just run back and forward like that. Like I say, I'm not going to do too much because it's quite a lot of particles that are going to come off quickly. Nice and easy to use, you're running this back and forward, just making sure that you're not riding with the bounce. If there's that much of a bounce, you're just skimming the surface. The devil stick is exactly the same. You can use the corner. And just run back and forward. Do that on both sides. Even that little touch, I can already smell that in the air, so I don't want to do too much more um, for mine and Charlie's sake. But that will clean up the surface of that. It'll open the pores up. So not only when you first buy it, when it's first new, think about um, you've been sharpening for a few weeks, you're starting to glaze the wheel. You're filling the pores of the abrasive compound with, with metal, basically. It's starting to glaze. It'll start heating the tools up prematurely. So again, you want to open this, break the seal with, again, either your devil truing stick, um, or your diamond truing stick. That'll just open everything up for you. Okay, there we are. So nice and clean and ready to go. All right, are we good to go, Charlie? Yeah. Uh, can you get the uh, the holder for the saddle and the skew attachment separately? Yes, you can. All of those jigs that I just showed you are available separately. So if you wanted to put one of these bars on the other side, go for the BGM 100 which is that setup, move that over to this side as well. Like I've done on my grinder over there, I've got two uh, BGM 100s, so I can use both sides of the wheel, you see. So everything's available separately. It's just the BGK 400 is the whole kit for us wood turners put together. So if you didn't have anything tool mech and you wanted to, to, to add it, then just get the whole kit. It saves you a little bit of money long in the long um, Range. And uh, do you know if there's a product to stop static attracting fine dust to the APF10 visor? No, I don't. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that one, I'm honest. Um, no, I don't know. That's a research one, that one, I'm afraid. Sorry. Right, let's move on. Now, let's just, before we start using the jigs and sharpening things, let me just show you what I've done here. This is not a complicated piece of woodwork. We've got a certain footprint here. The instruction manual gives you clearly the distances that you need to um, position this. So I'm positioning from this part of the wheel to the outside of my platform is 160 millimeters. Okay, so it's from here to here. It's all in the manual, dead, dead easy um, to work out, as is the center of the wheel. So my, the calculation I had is given to me in here. I worked out the center, where the center of the grinder was, I, just by putting a, um, a square up, marked a line, then drew a square line across, so I had my center mark. Then for a 200 millimeter wheel, I need to move from that center line 35 millimeters out, and that's the back of the jig or the platform rather. So those were the measurements, they're in the manual, they, it shows you clearly. Um, so just look at, what page was it? Here we go, page seven, and it gives you all the information as to where to place everything. You're all good to go then. Then it's just a case of marking the holes, drilling through, I've got feet on here, so I don't have to worry about burying in the bottoms of my bolts here. The same on here, I've got feet so I can, I can protrude the, the bolts through and it doesn't matter. Can um, you use any, can, can you use any make of six inch grinder with the kit? Yes, because the grinder is separate from the actual kit, you see. I've just placed them both on a platform, um, no problem whatsoever. No problem whatsoever. Even if you've got the wheels on your grinder, which are the seven eighth, the narrow ones, um, it just means you have a slightly smaller working area, that's all, but it doesn't matter. What the grinder is makes no odds, whether it's a six, eight or 10 inch grinder, it will still work on this system. So it's really, really useful. 
Okay. Right then, so let's start thinking about sharpening something. I'm going to sharpen one of the, I suppose, one of the harder chisels first. So we're going to go with a bowl gown straight away because I'm set up for that. Um, I do it all the time. And this is a really neat way of working. So what we have, the platform's fixed. That's all nice and rigid. But these two knobs here just control the slide of that bar. This is a little micro adjuster which you can choose to use or not. So if you've got a, a tool that you sharpen regularly, set that to whatever distance. So there's three things that we need to consider. And remember, it's shown in lots of areas. It's shown in, in the manual. It's shown in the information that comes with each jig, but it's also shown on the TTS 100. And those bits of information are the, the recipes to create certain grinds. So if I show you on one of the bigger uh, slips, that might be easier for you to um, to, to work out. Uh, I tend to stick with a certain grind. So I tend to stick with this particular grind here. Is that clear, Charlie? Mm. Yeah. So it's um, recipe number four. So we've got five here. Recipe number four. That gives me a back angle of 55 degrees. The back angle to the gouge there. Getting a bit of light on it. A bit too much light, let me get rid of that. How's that? Better? So it gives me a back angle of 55 degrees. To achieve that, I need to position the jig, JS, jig setting, to position four. I'll show you where that is in a minute. Um, P stands for protrusion, so protrusion of tool through the jig. In this case, it's metric, so it's 65 millimeters. And I'm going to use hole A on the TTS 100. Okay, hole A. Okay, now we're set, we're gonna do all of those things now. We're gonna sharpen a 3.8 bowl gouge. So I'll remind you as we go which settings. So my 3.8 bowl gouge. Okay, and that's gonna have our 55 degree angle on it. Our first setting from the crib sheet there was jig setting four. So is that visible, Charlie? Should I, I'll move. All right, so we have zero, two, four, six. So I'm setting the arrow that's here to position four, and it's cranked. So there's no guesswork there. It is either at that position or not. So position four. So that's set. The next thing we're gonna do is put, I just unwind the, the cradle here. And this will go right the way down to your little quarter inch um, gouges and smaller, so you've got no worries there. So I've got to put the gouge through, and remember next is protrusion. And we want to get 65 mil protrusion through the jig. So with the help of the setter, the TTS 100, we've got, this is neat, because you've got the, um, the, the protrusion here, 55, 65, 75. It is a bench hook, if you wanted to put it on the bench, and use it as a little hook to do this or hold it in your hand. And we need to make sure that our protrusion, 65 mil. So it's just a neat little gadget to sort that out. So position four, 65 mil protrusion. Next of all, we need to think about the distance from the bar to the wheel. This is really important again, because that will change the angle of the, um, the, the bevel if not. So I want hole A, it's told me, in the crib sheet there, hole A. You're gonna put that on the bar. And now what I need to do, can you view down that line, Charlie? What we have to make happen now is both of the metal discs here touch the wheel. There we are, we're about there. It's a little bit. not touching. There's a little bit more. This is where the little micro adjuster could come in handy. Bottom one's not touching. <laughs> there we are, that'll do, that will do. I'm not gonna lose any sleep over that. All right, so that's a, not quite a quick way of setting up. And if you wanna keep going back to that, put your little micro adjuster up and you can go back to it each time. That's ready. All we have to do now, and I'm gonna sharpen this one for you, that will go onto the bar, make sure your spark guard's not gonna clash. And then you're gonna move around and around, okay?
okay dead dead easy so let's get my visor on just give me let's have that camellia oil charlie just give that a little squirt before i start just a little bit of lube now and again and i'm going to pop my visor on For the bowl gouge, do you put a secondary grind on it using the post adjustment? Absolutely. You can. Yeah, you can put a secondary grind. You'll see in some of them um, for the secondary grind, um, I've used uh, the uh, grind on the heel for, for internal bowl curves if you want to. And you can drop the post down, um, make them go a little bit, uh, little bit further if you wish. Um, I tend to do it by hand if I'm honest. Um, rather than mess around with that, I'll tend to keep that where it is. But absolutely, yeah, you can do that. And there are instructions in the manual how to uh, also. But there we are. That was a, a fairly simple way of sharpening. The, my best advice for the first time is using that jig is don't fight it. It wants to move and not in a um, not in a, a regular arc. It will go a slight, um, a slight crescent shape as it, you know, more of a peak than a, a true arc. So if you fight it, the chisel will come off. But look, the thing is with a jig grind, you're always going to get a single facet um, on there. I'm not overheating it. I'm not sort of staying there for too long. And I'm um, giving it a nice gentle touch. All right. Can you see the chisel tip there, Charlie? All right. Nice and simple. Whilst we've got that jig there, whilst I'm almost set up, we're going to look at the spindle gouge as well. The spindle gouge is very similar. My spindle gouges um, here, they're set to um, the... 45 degree bevel angle here but the you can do or they give you instructions for the 30 degree which is what's referred to um, as a profile gouge they can be quite aggressive only use those once you've had a bit of practice um, with a regular spindle gouge first um, so we're going to do the 45 okay which is this one regular spindle gouge to achieve that we do everything the same as we've just done except we change one thing the jig setting so now we're in position two where we were in position four. But the same thing here, we've got protrusion of 65 and hold A. So I don't need to, to touch um, the, the bar. All I need to do is reset that to 65 mil. And then we'll change the jig setting to position two. So get the TTS back out, 65 mil. That was a lucky guess. It's been off that. Okay. And then Jig setting two, one, two. Again, like I say, there is no, there's no guesswork. It is either in that position or it's not clear to see. Got the big arrow here. And then we're off shopping again. Someone asked me last week, why have I got two horns? Or why did they have two horns coming forward? That would be spending too much time sharpening the middle. So you have the, the wings creeping forward. If you've got a point in the middle, you're just spending too long on the wings and not enough time in the, in the, in the center. So you control the actual curvature. If you want a flat curve, grind more in the center of the gouge. If you want a more pointed one, then longer on the wings. You're in control of that. 
But in terms of the grind, the angle, that's all done for us. The jig controls all of that. And a single facet, like I say, so nice and neat and tidy. But relax when you're sharpening. Just nice, gentle touch. Don't press too hard, like I say. And you'll find things go much, much easier um, for you. So that's the that's the bowl gouge jig and spindle gouge jig. We're going to put that one to one side now. We're going to move on. We're going to sharpen a roughing gouge next. So let's look at the multi-jig first. So the first part of the multi-jig, and let me just take my visor off just for a second. The first part of the multi-jig, so without the skew attachment. So there's the multi-jig naked. That's the skew attachment. We won't use that just yet. So this is just a saddle. If you're wondering, it has a long face and a short face. Long face always forward, so pointing toward the grinder. Okay, just gives you a better control. I'm gonna pop the rough and gouge in. From experience, it's between 75 and 100 mil. Doesn't really make much difference. This, this is gonna be all about the adjustment and eyeballing. I'm just gonna just wanna set that up a little so it's nice and upright. Sorry, I'm off camera a minute. And for those that have only just joined us, we will be repeating this in the new year, so don't worry. Um, there we are. Uh, roughing gouges are around about 45 degrees on their bevel angle, roughly. Um, there's no jig setting to set this up. All we're going to do is the old engineer's trick of a bit of black on the back. So a little, little pen to get that exactly the same, if you want to get it exactly the same, of course. So a little bit of black on the back. Don't start the, angle, the grinder running just yet. You're going to eyeball... Eyeball it up, pinch it up. Look at the back. Now you can see there, hopefully the camera's picking this up, just it's grinding a little bit heavy on the heel. So that means I'm too far forward. So I'm gonna use the adjuster, slacken off, wind the bar out a couple of times. Got a few questions. Go for it. Can the jig and the SK100 be used on the Kraft 250 Whetstone? Well, that's got a bar already, so just go for the jigs. Yeah, you don't need to worry. Just get the TTS 100, the bowl gouge jig, um, and the multi-jig, and you're all ready to go. Um, what's the difference between the U and the V flute on the BPWL gouge, and what is best? Um, I always go for a V flute. Absolutely. It gives you more strength to the gouge. How do you avoid concave wings on the gouge? Please. Um, so, uh, sharpen a little bit longer on the tip and on the very back of the wing. Look at that. Now we're fully covered on that bevel. We've got the whole grind there. So I'm ready to go. Could could you do a swept back gouge? So a nails or a style gouge, I'll do one in a second. and easy if you were really fussy carry on and do these little bits on the corners i'm not i would go on and use that because it's fully sharpened on the edge but if you're always sharpening this method it won't happen anyway a lot of my gouges are hand sharpened um so no jigs but um yeah nice and simple that one dead dead easy we're going to adopt that same process on the skews later on as well um, how do you set the angle for the roughing gouge if the current grind is bad? Like they, they can't use the black ink method or they'll just recreate the bad angle. So you're looking for 45 degrees. So you're going to have to eyeball that one. All right. So, you know, a mitre 45 degrees, you can eyeball that fairly well. So get nearly there, make the grind, review it. If you think, OK, I need to have it slightly more, or slightly less. Use the micro adjuster to do that. And then once you've got it, then you've got uh, something to copy next time. So now we're going to go for one of the parting tools. 
The parting tools, and this one's going to be a beading and parting tool. Parting tools set up in the same way. I'm going to just pop them upright in the jig. There we are. So that's then fixed into the jig. Okay. Black ink method. Same thing. Once you start getting to bigger, um, bigger angles like this, your eyeballing is far easier. about right we'll give that one a go and a gentle rot from um, as you sharpen here so same on the other side So that gentle rock from side to side just stops you from um, creating a biased grind because if you just plant the chisel down, it's very difficult not to put a little bit more pressure on one side than the other. So just a gentle rock to and forward um, just stops that from happening and you don't, you still get a square edge, um, it doesn't affect that at all. But there we are and that will give you the same on both sides. Again, if I was just to carry on, I'd come all the way back um, if you wanted to. Or oh, what angle for the beading and parting tool? Um, mine vary massively. Um, they can be anything from sort of 45 all the way through to sort of 35. Um, so there's a huge difference in there. Like anything else, like a scooters or bowl gouge, um, like we were just talking about the, the, the profile gouge, the more extreme the angle, um, the, the sharper the tool, the more aggressive they become. Okay. So that one there is probably about 45 looking at it. Okay, around about 45. There we are. What are we on now? So we want to do, let, whilst we've got that bowl gouge out, let's do uh, an Ellsworth grind. Now this is a new addition. So I've got one of my gouges only as an Ellsworth grind. It's one that I use for making wooden fruit. Um, so it's swept right the way over. An Ellsworth grout, a grind is um, specified by name in this crib sheet. So it's number five, Ellsworth shape. Wings are pronounced convex. Okay, so let's get our jig. What did I do with that? Oh, there it is. So to follow that, I need a protrusion through the jig of 75 mil. We've gone up in protrusion size now. So let's get 75. Another lucky guess. Um, 75, we need jig setting six and hole A. So back to hole A. And quite an extreme position on the jig. You can see it sweeping those wings over. And again, this this particular gouge I use for the um, for top and tailing fruit. Um, so I create it with quite a point on, on the end. 
But that's an Ellsworth gr um, grind where it sweeps those wings on the sides over even further. We've got the skew chisels, I think, would be the next one to go to. So let me just change the multi jig around a little bit. We just need to add the skew bit. So that just means taking the seat out. Take the seat and pop them out of the way so I don't drop it. Okay, so there we are. That's now got the section in. How do you set the bar height from the board? They've got the BM100, but don't have the instructions for it. The bar height from... Oh, BM100, right. Uh, the bar height from the board. Um, what is your grinder... What is your grinder um, wheel size? I'll just tell you what the, what the manual says. Can you clearly show setting the P-valve uh, when you set up the skew chisel? Read me, that. Let me have a look. Yeah, let me have a look. Hey. Where is it? Uh, clearly show setting up the P... Oh, the protrusion value. I have uh, a nice suspicion. I have fluffed mine. <laughs> okay. Um, the protrusion. Yes, not a problem. Um, so let's go... Let's do a, a standard one first. So a standard one, um, if I look at the manual here, so straight edge skew chisels, I'm always going to go 45 over 30 um, on this particular one. Um, so let me go. So jig set in 20 degrees, protrusion 55, hole B. Hole B's close. Now this is if you're using um, Tormex settings. None of my jigs are. Uh, none, sorry, none of my skews are set to Tormek um, angles, so I'm going to have a problem with this, and I'll show you why. But we'll change it anyway. So uh, then we've got protrusion of 55 degrees. I'm going to use a standard skew chisel. You've got uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes left to go. Yeah. That no, we're nearly there. Shall we? Just one more to do. So you've got a clamp inside. All the way back. I don't think you would have fluffed it up. Make sure it's in there straight. So you can see that he's just sat in the little V block. Okay, 55 degree bevel angle. It's from here to the point. Have a look, I guess. All right, so 55 degrees. Oh, sorry, 55 uh, mil protrusion. So it's from there to the point. Um, and then the book says 20 degrees. Here are the degree marks. I don't know whether my angle there is 20 degrees or not, if I'm honest. So let's have a look. He's not, he needs to come out a bit further. So what we're gonna do is that we'll set, what I tend to do is go with the black mark, the black ink method again, set that up. Uh, my angle isn't the same here either. So I'm gonna adjust that. And so it's not 20 degrees. The easiest way is just to put a little line on your wheel, but we're not going to bother with that today. I need to come further out. Would you recommend re-grinding an oval, uh, oval skew to 25 degrees per side? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, he'll probably be on about a 15, I would have thought, out of the box. Right, there we are. We're going to sharpen. Everything's tight. So I've adjusted it. If you're not sure where to adjust it to, use the pen mark. Um, the black ink mark, that really, really helps. And then also adjust your angle to suit what you've already got. But we're going to wiggle that back and forward again. Just rock it slightly. The visor on. We're gonna. What do I need to do? I need to go a little bit closer. So. That's better. See, it won't take me long to get that facet all the way back. And again, if it was me, I'd just carry on and sharpen like that. I would, however, before I go on to the timber, I would just now give that a, a slightly um, a slightly better sharpen by adding a diamond file onto that as well. So just a couple of wipes up both ends just to take the wire edge away because inevit inevitably you're going to get that from a wheel like this. Um, you won't get it so much on a, a, well, you won't get it at all on a, um, a whetstone, but you will on the CBO <coughs> and the aluminum oxide, the carborundum. So just a little bit of a touch with a hand diamond file, take off the wire. But you just keep going a little bit more, take off the rest of the heel, or have the, the bar a little bit closer, and that would give me my single facet. And just very quickly, just to prove that you can be done, I just want to put one of my signature skews in there as well and do the same thing. Someone's asked, how would you sharpen the Colwyn Way tapered skew? Yeah, so there's the, yeah, I'm, I've gone for the big one, might as well. And what angle is it? So around about 25 degrees, single side. I'm going to go slightly longer protrusion because I'm not following any of the Tormek um, angles. And that means I can bring my bar away from the away from the um, grinder a little bit more. There we are. So first of all, I'm just going to set the angle up here, and I'm going to do that by eye, just by slackening off the nut, bringing that around a suit. There we are, and that should be fairly quick. You shouldn't need to worry too much about that. Then we can start adjusting to suit bevel angle. I'm going to try that first. Maybe that. And I think what a lot of people worry about with the with these signature skews is because they're not square, the grip. But once you've tightened that up, it's gripping on the front face absolutely fine. The fact that this has got a lovely rolled edge really does help. So let's have a go at sharpening that one.
certainly tell a difference when you go to a CBN. It does make a difference. It is a, a much harder material. But there again, look, we've got, again, if I can get the light to glint off of it, you can get an idea of the facet there. All right, you can just see we're getting the whole of that facet sharp and nicely. Again, a little bit of a touch up with the diamond file now, and that would really make a difference. Does sharpening gouges on a wheel affect ride, riding the bevel, or is it the slight concave shape so small that it makes no difference? It doesn't make any difference. The only difference it makes is when you're doing a very <coughs> narrow um, radius. Sometimes you can get those um, little ridges on the inside of the bolt. And that's what we were talking about with the addition of a secondary bevel on the heel. That gives you a um, better chance to avoid those ridges because it's presenting then more of a convex um, grind to the concave inner part of the bowl. So Charlie, let's pan back. Let's just have a quick recap and a, a little bit of a Q&A session. We're, we're almost at time. So that's the BGK400. Remember the BGK400 comes as one kit and it gives you in a box like that gives you all the kit that we've just used all the jigs it's basically a wood turners jig set but also it gives you the ability to fix it to your bench grinder so if you have no intention of buying something like a Tormek but you want to use their jigs because like I said in my opinion they are some of the best that you're going to get your hands on um, and you want to use your bench grinder do it I mean that's my perfect um, setup is slow speed grinder cbm wheel and this system this bgk 400 system um, or the bgm like i said if you have some jigs already so charlie just before we go are there any questions at all no no well i'm going to do the same to charlie as i've done to finley um on tuesday charlie i just need you to come this side of the camera very quickly it's nice to see shaking his head um because it's the last time we're going to see charlie so he's been with me since march he was the first cameraman i want to thank him ever so much from me and from Axmans and from everybody that's watching, I'm sure. Thank you, buddy. Um, you can go back to the camera now. <laughs> they hate the, this side of the camera. But thank you, guys. Thanks for your support. We have one more live demo to do, which is next Tuesday. A little bit of fun, a little bit of messing around for us because it's Christmas and things. So, again, thanks for the support, guys. It's oh, not uh, an wait, end. wait, there's one oh, question. On. It's not an end to anything. We will be continuing demonstrations from a different venue with different camera equipment, which should hopefully please everybody. Final few questions uh, then, Charlie. With the bracket, is it set a line? With wheel. No. Lily, keep that question. I'll answer it tomorrow or via email. Any more? No. Nope. We're going to go. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic weekend. See you on Tuesday. Um, I've been Colwyn, 4 o'clock Tuesday. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.